Hey, Threadheads. Darren here, just getting set up. I'm going to try and do a few egg patterns here today. Just give me a second here just to make some adjustments. There we go. I think that's okay. All right. So we're going to do a bunch of different egg patterns today. I've got quite a few tied up here. So we've got about an hour or so. And uh, we're going to try and get through as many as we can. I've got the live chat up beside me here so if you wanted to uh, post anything I'll have a look after each fly and I'll answer any questions that you might have so hopefully that's in decent focus here all right so we're just going to start with some of the easier stuff and uh, the first one we're going to do this is um, a crystal egg ball so this is uh, basically just like a little craft puff with a little bit of pearl uh, flash um, in, that's kind of embedded into the egg. So this is probably absolutely the easiest egg you'll ever make in your life. So the only thing you have to do is just be careful that you're not going to stab yourself. And I've got a bunch of different colors. Um, when Superfly was around, they used to have a variety of colors. I think you can find these at the craft store, something like that. It's a nice uh, orange one there. Maybe we'll try that one here. So the only thing you really need to worry about with this is that you don't stab yourself with the hook when you're trying to put the egg actually on to the uh, hook itself. So if you've ever played with one of these, they're pretty easy to get the hook through on the outside, but then they've got a bit of a tough core in the middle. So you just want to make sure that you uh, are careful here and that you're not going to stab yourself. Just work that in. Be mindful of the hook here. Once you got it on there, you can kind of see. You could just fish it like that if you want, but we're going to just add a little bit extra durability to it. So we'll just start by, got some 6 aught thread. Just put a few wraps down there. And what I usually do is just take something like um, some super glue. It's probably the best thing or a bit of uh, hard as nails will work also and we can whip finish that before we finish the fly actually sorry my uh, whip finish hand is right in the way of the camera gear here so it's a little awkward That was a terrible whip finish, but. So anyways, then once you got that, you can just simply push that egg onto the thread. And once that dries, it'll stiffen up and it's not going to move back and forth on the, uh, on the hook there. So that's our first, our first uh, egg pattern. And I've got some water here also so i think somebody was kind of asking how these look when they get wet so we'll just try and demonstrate that as well you kind of see this one got a bit of float to it you see it's got a lot of sparkle once you get the air out it should sink so if you fish in those on the river you'll want to 
just make sure that you uh, give it a good squeeze in the water before you start fishing with it. It's got a nice shape. It's got a little bit of uh, pearl halo around it. Not a bad thing to have. All right, so we're going to move on to the next easiest pattern here. And that would be a foam egg. Now, I don't know if I need to mention it, but for a lot of these, you can do either a bead head or a non-bead head. And if you wanted to uh, make them heavier, you can also do a tungsten bead, which will help it get down a little bit faster. So if you do have a, something that's got a little bit of air in it, uh, it'll kind of overpower that anyways. So we're going to be using a little bit of McFly foam here. And I believe this is champagne color. Uh, they've got quite a few different colors, like maybe 25 or 30 different colors. But what we're going to do is we're going to just cut off two little sections a little bit longer than the hook. And uh, so you can see when you take this out of the package, it's got kind of larger threads. They're not really well defined, but you can kind of pull them apart. And I usually use two of these threads and I'll use um, two different little bundles of that. So I'll cut them about an inch or so. And then I'll just put those aside and then we'll get the fly started. And if you want, you can mix up the colors give that fly a little bit of variety. We're gonna be using our orange thread again. So again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them out in the chat section. Or if you just wanna say, hey, I'll give you a shout out, some tie in here. All right, so we just put a little base layer of thread. Now you don't completely need that for this egg because we're going to be basically just tying right in the center but what I like to do is just add a little bit on the back and the front and I'll put a little bit of head cement or glue there and that just kind of helps uh, hold the egg like uh, after it dries out it kind of holds the shape a little bit better so what we do is we take our little one inch strip and I just like stretch it out especially in the middle. And then we'll place that on top. So you can give that a couple wraps and then you can just pull it down to the bottom and then you can cinch it to make sure that it's on there really well. And then we'll do the same thing with the top section. We'll just take our thread and slide it between there. You don't want to use too light a thread because you need to put a bit of tension on this so you don't want it to break. So when you feel you've got enough tension on those and they're kind of snug in there, you just pull the top one out and then you're going to sneak the thread through there. And we'll pull the bottom and we'll just cinch up in here. And then we'll add a whip finish here. All right. So now we want to just shape this egg. So what we do is just kind of separate top and the bottom. And uh, this takes a little bit of practice to get fairly correct, but you want about a hook gap, hook gap on the top and about the same on the bottom. And what we do is we just hold that all nice and tight, pull it down as much as you can. And then in one clean cut, everything gets 
snipped off here. So you kind of see the bottoms just a little bit shorter than the top, so it doesn't completely match up, but once you fluff that out, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But you can see it's got a nice shape how it is here, but um, you can kind of see if you're pulling it through the water, it kind of loses its shape a little bit. So what I like to do is just take a little bit of Sally Hansen's or some crazy glue. We'll just add a little bit or a lot of bit glue and then we'll just kind of pull those over as naturally as possible. You want to make sure you got your eye open still and if you got room on the back we'll do the same thing. A little bit of head cement or some crazy glue. So there's your second easiest fly pattern. Not that any of them are hard at all, but. All right, so that's egg number two. And uh, I'm not gonna use this one. I'm gonna let it dry, but I've got another one here. And we'll drop that one in. See how it looks. And again, that one, it's got a bit of a different look than the, um, the egg ball, the craft uh, one. But it's uh, got a nice natural look to it. And again, you can add some different colors to that. So if you wanted to use like a little bit of orange with some of the pink, it makes kind of a nice combination. You can add some red in there if you want. So that brings us to our next one. So we're gonna be tying for this one, basically the same, but we're gonna add just a small variation on that. And we're gonna add a blood spot to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a base layer of thread on here. You just want something for the glue to kind of soak into. Again, if you have any questions, feel free. Just type them in the chat and uh, I'll have a look every once in a while here. So for this, we're going to take uh, we don't need a lot of material, so I'd take about half of one of those foam threads. And again, I'll take about an inch or so. Just going to leave that there for a second. I'm just going to prepare the same as what I did for the... Um, McFly foam egg. I'm just going to get two one inch pieces with two pieces of the McFly foam. All right. So we're going to start this one the same way. We're going to uh, take our two, two uh, strands of McFly foam yarn and we'll just pull those apart. Put a few wraps in there. And then we're gonna pull that down to the bottom. Now we're gonna take our two for the top and then we're gonna take this orange or red, usually a darker orange or red color. And we're gonna put those together and you want this orange one to be right up on top here. And again, you're just gonna kind of twist out the middle Put that red on top. I'm gonna add a few loose wraps just to get everything established and then a couple harder wraps, pull that back and we'll wrap that through. Kind of come back into where the egg started here. 
and then we'll add a whip finish. All right. So again, we just need to trim that up. And basically it's the same pattern with an extra color in it, but it uh, makes a different, quite a different look. So again, we just want to kind of measure where we want to cut it. And then with one clean cut, pull everything. And then again on the bottom, There we go. Just pull, push that out, just kind of fluff it up. You kind of see, we've got that nice dark mark in there. So one other thing you can do, if you don't want to do it with the extra yarn, you can take a Sharpie. You can just add your dots if you want. Uh, my preference is just to use the fly foam honestly so again we'll just put a little bit of uh, head cement down there just to kind of help that form the shape I think you get the idea again if you have any questions feel free just uh, in the chat All right, so on to pattern number four. Um, I think we're gonna do a little chenille egg. So again, this isn't ramping up the difficulty, anything. So we're gonna use um, another Gamakatsu C14S hook for this. And uh, that's what I've used for all these ones so far. I like these because they got a, a straight eye and they're nice straight shank for egg patterns, like for the eggs that are more globular, if that makes any sense. So for this, we're going to use our orange thread again. We'll just go ahead and we'll put on a little base layer. So I've got my ultra chenille this is the uh the bug shop stuff not a sponsor but they got some really nice ultra chenille in some uh, really great egg colors i think i showed this on an earlier video or two uh, so what we do for this it's, we just want to expose the core of that a little bit so we'll just pull a little bit of the material off and you can kind of see that you've got these two cores and we just want to expose that and then we'll wrap those down just to make sure we got that material locked in place take our thread up here and i like to add a little bit of glue in here And just kind of give it a really generous application on the hook shank here and then just want to start wrapping forward so the goal of this is to create an egg shape so once we get just behind the eye we'll cross back over and I usually do three forward two back and then once I get to here kind of come over the top and go across this way so that we're got pressure on that last strip here that's not going to slip off easily and we'll tie that down on the other side and we just want to be careful when we cut that material off that we're not going to make a mess of it Just use a few extra wraps of thread. Just to 
kind of make a nice head on that fly. Put a little bit of head cement on here. It's got your basic egg shape in there. It's not quite as nice as the McFly foam, I would say. And in this case, if you did want to add that a that uh, blood spot, you can go ahead with a Sharpie. This material, chenille, takes on the Sharpie a little bit better than the McFly foam anyways. So there you go, there's uh, fly pattern number four. And we'll have a look, see what that looks like in the water. I need to, uh, something to poke that around with here. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, not as nice as the other two, I would say, but definitely an option. All right, so let's try uh, another one here. I'm gonna do something called a thunder egg. This one's a little bit more complex, so again, we'll Throw in a hook. And these are size eight that I'm tying on for reference. So again, we'll just put on a base layer of thread. And I'm gonna use a four millimeter dumbbell eye here. I just got one of these, uh, or it's not lead, it's uh, brass, sorry. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to cross the eyes on here. So I usually start three or four wraps this way, come under the hook, and then we'll cross it the other way just to kind of even it out, add a few wraps. And you just want to make sure that sort of even doesn't have to be perfectly even here then I usually give a couple wraps and then pinch it and pull the thread tight just to pull out any slack and help tighten up the eyes on the hook shank and then we'll do the same on the top and I like to add a little bit of head cement in there and let that soak into the thread wraps. And then I'll add a few more. Wraps both ways, underneath the hook and over the top as well. All right. They're fairly solid in there. So that's gonna work pretty well. I'm gonna take a couple strands of Pearl Crystal Flash, or could use Colored Crystal Flash if you want. We're just going to tie that in. I'm going to fold that in half first. And then, uh, so I've taken two, cut them in half, so I have four. And we'll trail those off the end. We just tie those in right at the base of the eyes. We'll pull those out. Pull that forward, tie everything down together, and uh, cut some a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. You don't want them all to be the same length, in my opinion. Okay. So we're going to use some more of this uh, ultra chenille. We're going to use the light row for this one. 
what did we or did we use light roe for that one? Uh, we use Oregon cheese for this guy. So again, you want to just come in here, pull off a few of the uh, fibers off the core. I'll just give you a nice spot to tie in. It's really nice and secure, and it's not going to add any bulk to the fly on you. Okay, so we got that in place. We'll advance our thread with a couple extra wraps. I probably should have put these eyes back just a little bit. It's going to be a little bit tricky to finish off that eye. But uh, let's see how we do. Okay, so let's just add... We'll come under the eye and back over. And then we'll wrap towards us under the hook. And then we'll cross over the other way. And we'll come under the hook once more. And then I think we'll finish it up here. I think that's OK. It's not as uh, symmetrical as I had hoped, but it's going to work. So we'll just ease our thread through here. And then we'll make sure we got a few wraps in there. And with the chenille still attached, I like to just pull it back and tie into it just so that it's fairly secure. Give that a trim. And then we'll clean up the head a little bit with a few wraps. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, bone dry on this one, just underneath here. Just so it doesn't come undone. So there's your thunder egg. So that one's got a little bit of weight, so it's going to sink pretty quick. Let's see what it looks like in the dunk tank. All right, so here we go. So that one sank pretty quick. You kind of see it, that uh, pearl stuff coming off the back. It'll stick pretty nice. Give it a little bit more attraction in the water. All right. So now that brings us to kind of my standard, which would be an Estaz egg. And uh, I've got quite a few that I tie in here, but it, it's, it's a fairly easy pattern. I'm going to tie one in uh, salmon opal here. And so what we do is we just put a base layer of thread on here. Oh, where'd my scissors go? Here we go. And we'll just kind of pinch back the materials here. We'll tie those in. So when we wind this, just kind of palmer backwards every time we wrap it around the hook shank. Just want to kind of pull all those fibers backwards so you can kind of pack them in so they're nice and dense.
just pull that back. You want to make sure that you wrap both in front and in behind to lock that in. And just give it a little bit extra, a little bit of a tag there so it doesn't slip out. But one of the nice things about tying with a bead is you can kind of pull it down a little bit hard. You can kind of hide the thread wraps in the space between the bead and the body. So gives you a bit of a seamless looking little uh, fly pattern there. All right, so we'll give that a whip finish and then we'll throw that one in the dunk tank too, see how it looks. So I tend to add glue to certain materials like the chenilles and uh, the McFly foam. Uh, this one doesn't seem to need it so much, but I will usually just put some regular head cement on those thread wraps just so that they don't come undone. Push those ahead. All right, let's have a look in the dunk tank here, see what happens. Again, with the bead, this one's going to dive down pretty quick, so you don't have to worry about the weight of it. It's got a little bit of uh, the pearl. It's similar to the uh, craft egg here, the pom-pom. There you go. That's what those look like underwater. All right, so how many is that? Five, six eggs? All right, where are we now? Let's go to, um, there's a new material out on the market, newish. I think it's, uh, comes out of the UK. It's called Eggstasy. So it's kind of a, a moppy kind of material. They've got quite a few different colors also. I've got, uh, here's a peach color here. Uh, salmon row, hot pink. It's a mojito. It's kind of a light greenish color. Uh, chartreuse, pink, red. I think those are all the colors I've got, six or seven. So I really like this peach here, so let's tie up a fly using that. I haven't had too much time to play around with this yet, but one thing I really like about it is how it looks underwater. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to throw that into a bag just so it doesn't go all over the place. Oh, hey, Tim, I'm just seeing your message on the chats here now. Thanks for tuning in. All right, I think we're going to go back to the orange. And I guess we'll need a hook. So let's take out uh, number eight, Gamagatsu. And we'll just start off by putting a base layer of thread. All right. And I mean, a lot of these basic uh, process of tying them is somewhat the same. So this material, like it, to me, it feels a lot like... Um, a bit of a finer version of the McFly foam, maybe a little bit softer, but it's got this core in here. So you can kind of 
to see how it's made up. It's just a twisted core. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the front and just take a few of the fibers out just so we can tie that down and not add a whole lot of bulk. Just to make sure it's really secure in there. Then we'll go up to the front. So for this, I'm going to add a little bit of hard as nails on there. And just because that'll help that stay on the hook shank really nicely. And a lot, same way we're going to do like the Estas, we're just going to kind of palmer that forward every time we wrap it. Just have to be careful about that glue that you don't drag your fingers through it. Get up to the front here, make a little part. Throw that in there. So add a couple wraps just to secure it. Pull everything back. Trim off the excess. Not a lot of waste there, which is great. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a brush. Should clean that brush once in a while. That uh, just kind of puffs it out a little bit. Pull everything back. Here we go. And you can kind of see it's got a, might be hard to see with the video here, but it's got a bit of a, an orange glow coming from within the uh, cheese color here. I'm not sure if that's, I guess that's from the core of it. It's a little bit darker orange. So, which gives it a really nice look anyways. Uh, but I do like how this looks when it gets wet. And uh, we'll give this one a dunk. Once you get the air out of there, it's got a nice kind of foggy halo to it. go kind of reminds me of the McFly foam a little bit but you can kind of see the core of that coming through it's a little bit more translucent but it's becoming a really popular material to tie eggs with in the last year or two and uh, they've got a few different products that I haven't had a chance to try yet uh, but I would like to they have the eggs to see with uh, pearl fibers, kind of like the the uh, the eggs that's woven in with the uh, the uh, material there. They've also got some with uh, pearl, and they might have something else. And I can't remember the names offhand, but uh, a few different neat things. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit here and we're going to kind of go into the sucker spawn type stuff i'm not going to tie any sucker spawns today because uh well frankly i just don't have any materials to tie sucker spawn with so we're not gonna so I've got a uh, Mustad C49S, this is size 6 here. And uh, just before we get into the next one, if you haven't already, just take a minute and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're into fly tying. 
Uh, we don't always do eggs, but we do add a few once in a while. And if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd appreciate it if you could give a thumbs up. And uh, let's get into the next one here. So I got some, let's see, that's not going to work. I'm going to use some shrimp or shell pink UTC 140. You want a bit of a thicker thread for this. So I'm going to start right behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to use touching wraps. I'm going to go down a little ways into the hook. And then we're going to go back up almost to the eye. And this just kind of gives us a nice base layer because we're going to be have exposed threads on the bottom of this. So I like to make sure that we got a decent uh, thread base built up there. So let's see, do we have... So for this, we're gonna be using diamond braid. And I've got some fluorescent shrimp pink here. That's from the hairline. And this is uh, a bit of a softer pink than the hot pink. So what I do is I take, uh, when I get a new package, I take everything out and find the two ends and just put them outside the bag. And then I reseal it and just leave the section here unsealed so I can pull material out as I need it. So we're just gonna grab the two ends here. We're gonna match them up more or less. And we don't wanna go right on top of the eye. We just wanna come back and start wrapping those down. I wanna try and keep them right on top of the hook shank as much as possible. And this just helps keep the body even as we're tying. You could start it back here if you want to not bind down that material there. So we got down to the back, we'll advance our thread two or three wraps. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a little loop in the back with both of those strands of the diamond braid. We're going to come over top with three wraps and just snug it, make sure that it's tight in there. We're gonna take our diamond braid, make sure that we got that on top of the hook shank. And we're gonna come in and make a slightly bigger loop here. And again, we're just gonna take our thread, three or four wraps there. Make sure everything's up on top. Again, Slightly bigger loop. So depending on the hook size, this one's a number six, so I'll usually do uh, six or seven loops on this one. You just want to be careful that you don't get carried away with your loops. The size of those can creep as you go forward. But every time you create a loop, three or four wraps, and then you just want to wiggle it up a little bit just to make sure that nothing's hanging down on the bottom there. And when I get to the front, let's start to take the size of those loops down a little bit and put a smaller one right at the front. And if I'm tying this with a bead, I'll, uh, I won't worry so much as making a smaller one at the front here. All right, so we got that tied in. Add a couple wraps under the eye. Give that a snip. So this one, 
I don't like the name crystal meth, so I usually just call it crystal sucker spawn. Um, but it's a pretty effective fly. We'll just carefully give that whip finish. Apologize for the bad whip finishing here. But I don't have quite enough room <laughs> to do it properly. All right. So to finish this one off, just like to turn that upside down. And again, we're gonna grab some bone dry. I'm gonna give just on the thread wraps on the bottom there. Just cause you have those exposed all the time, we wanna make sure that um, they're protected. They're not gonna get ripped apart with a tooth or something. All right, looks good. So let's throw that one in the dunk tank, see what happens. You kind of see how the light bounces off that uh, pearlescent material quite a bit. Kind of looks like a bit of a cluster of eggs. You see that tumbling down the river. It's uh, easily mistaken for sucker spawn in the spring or salmon or steelhead eggs during a fall run. All right, let's see, we're at 45 minutes here, so let's uh, see what we got. There's a couple in here. I don't think I'm going to tie. Um, here's an interesting one that I've been playing around with. Uh, this one, I don't think necessarily has a name. I guess it's a bit of a hybrid between an Estaz egg and an Eggstasy egg. Uh, if you have a suggestion for the name, feel free to uh, put in the comments. And uh, if it's something that I end up using, if someone else hasn't already given this creation a name, I'll credit it to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, some Estas. We're going to take something that's a fairly light color here. Like maybe pearl if we can find it. All right, so we got the opalescent white, so the pearl. We'll tie that in right at the, the back. And we'll grab some orange egg stessy. Again, we'll just kind of expose the core on a little bit. And tie that in. I'm gonna use a little bit of glue just to help that stick down. And we're gonna wrap the eggs to see around that. Not really uh, packed in there or anything, just kind of loosely wrapped up to the eye. Trim that off. Now we're just going to uh, Pretend that this S does is a hackle. We're gonna wind that through. And now we've got kind of an orange core with this pearl around it. It's kind of uh, 
a nice combination and hopefully it's going to give us some of the better features of each of those two eggs. I guess both of those being um, probably the ones I'd use as my go-tos on the river right now. We'll add a whip finish on there. Pull that back and we'll just add a little bit of head cement right in there. I'm just going to grab the brush and kind of tease stuff out a little bit. Kind of see how that kind of mixes up things a little bit. Let's see. See how the light's playing on that. Hey Steve, how's it going? Good to see you here. I think it was actually Steve who made the suggestion we should be dunking these just to see how they look in the water. So thanks for that, Steve. All right, so here is our mix-up, our hybrid Estas eggs to see egg. It's kind of a cool looking one. It's got a lot of different tones in there. A little bit of the uh, pearlescent sticking out. Um, and I think I did mention it before that uh, Ecstasy has a product with a bit of that pearlescent woven into the braid. So that might be something kind of cool to look at in the future, but I think it might kind of operate the same. Um, just for time's sake, there's a couple that I'm not going to tie. I'm just going to show them to you here, but basically this is a different Estaz egg and it's tied using the uh, same method as the uh, crystal sucker spawn. So everything's looped on top and it kind of keeps the hook, the gap open fairly well. So some people prefer this here over like an Estaz egg. Um, if you find that you're missing a lot of strikes or you're not getting a hookup, you might want to try something like this where your egg's right on top and you have cleared underneath. And uh, on that note, let's look at same thing done with the eggs to see. So this one's looped up top also it just looks like a, a bit of a cluster up top but again you just loop those up and then on the bottom we'll add a little bit of bone dry or just hard as nails or something like that all right so I'll let those ones get wet and we'll have a look at them Got a lot of eggs in there all of a sudden. All right, so here's the uh, Estas. That one looks pretty good. And then here, over here, is the Ecstasy Spawn. That one looks pretty good as well. I like how that kind of floats off. All right. So I've got, let's see, one, two, two more patterns maybe. Um, I'll do a quick nuke egg, I guess. Let's see here. And we'll just do one with a little bit of Estas. I don't really have the best material here for doing a uh, veil on an egg. There's actually materials called egg veil that you can use and maybe you should use for stuff like this, but we're gonna use a little bit of Congo hair in place and see how that looks. So let's try uh, 
Let's switch up the color. Um, we'll go with a red. Use the opal red here in this case. And we'll just... I don't want to tie this right up to the eye. I just want to leave a little bit of room so I can put that veil on here. So you just want to leave yourself a couple millimeters as you're tying this. And again, we'll just do this Estes egg, same way we'd do standard one. And we'll just leave space for, we'll stop about a wrap earlier than I normally would. Trim that off. And we're just going to pull everything back. Clean up those wraps a little bit so that we got a nice platform. Um, I should mention also that I have used uh, ice, uh, pearl ice dubbing as a veil in the past, uh, which works rather nicely. Just trying to find mine here. Doesn't look like I have it handy. There it is. So something like this. This is the uh, ice dub UV pearl, basically. You pull it out like this and you can kind of put it over top of the uh, egg, makes a nice uh, veil. But uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of that. So just like a really loose wrap, just to kind of get everything grabbed in there. And push that all out. You kind of see that makes a bit of a nice veil. So as I said before, the other material we use is uh, something like Congo hair. I've got one done up with Congo hair already. I'll just kind of show you the difference. But it's not quite as nice. I like the uh, UV a bit better on that. Again, if we had uh, like actual egg veil, it might make a difference. Maybe that's something we'll have to play with around, play around with down the line. Hi, Dewey Jones from Northwest Wales. How's it going? All right, so we'll finish this one up and then we'll Put in the dunk test, dunk tank, see what it looks like. And we got Hardy out here too. How's it going, Hardy? So you kind of see the uh, way that UV looks in there. It's uh, pretty nice looking. So maybe a combination of the uh, Congo hair would be good. Let's have a look at the Congo hair one here. So it's a little bit more translucent, but you can just kind of see that Estaz egg with the pearl in behind it. It uh, gives it a bit of a different look. All right, guys, I have one more pattern that I'm going to tie for you today. And we're going to tie it on a size 6. Gamagatsu. C14S, as most of them have been. Actually, you know what? We're going to do a bead head for this one. Just a regular 
copper bead head. This is size six, and the bead head is 4.8 millimeter brass in a copper color. So we're gonna use some flat waxed nylon in hot orange. Just put on a base layer of thread here. All right, for this, I'm gonna need a little bit of monofilament. So I got some 50 pound mono here. And I'm gonna to need to burn this a little bit. Just to form a little bit of a ball on the end. Let that cool. Ouch, that's kind of hot. When I said let it cool, I guess I didn't mean that. So but we just want a little bit of a bump so that's not gonna pull out. Tie that on top of the hook shank. Trim that off the back. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, tie on something a little extra. This one's called Jake's Estaz Egg Plus. So we're just gonna stick a little bead through here. So we're gonna try. Oh, my light went out here. Let's see, I've got a backup battery. Okay, where were we? So we're gonna have to burn the end of this a little bit. Um, might not need that much. But usually I'll do this part first. So be careful you don't burn yourself. You want to form a big enough ball that it's not going to pop off the back. So just let that sit there. Look, it's solid. I'm just going to reinforce that with a little bit of um, glue here. Just gonna use some of the UV just on the front and the back. Just so that's tight on there. If you got some super glue, go ahead and use that. Kind of makes a nice little bonus egg. Hey, John Walker, thanks for joining us. And thanks for the comment, appreciate that. Glad you like the flies. All right, so we got some orange Estaz here and we'll just throw that on here. And then we're just gonna tie a regular Estaz egg. Um, full disclosure, I haven't really fished this one yet, um, but I've just been tying up a few of these and sending them out to uh, some of my customers. And uh, they've been coming back with some pretty good results with this egg, as well as the eggs to sea eggs is also. So this one's just something a little bit different, uh, a little bit uh, more complicated than just a couple glow bugs or yarn eggs. And uh, but anyways, that's all the eggs that I've got to show you guys today. And uh, 
Again, this one was uh, Jake's Estaz Egg Plus. And uh, I think that's probably my favorite one on there. But anyways, I'd appreciate it if you guys wouldn't mind, if you haven't already, just subscribing to the channel and uh, giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you like the dozen or so patterns we tied there. Well, I guess before we go, we need to see what that one looks like when it gets wet. So let's go ahead and do that. So you probably noticed I haven't been posting a lot of videos lately, but part of the reason is because I've been busy tying stuff like this. So unfortunately, that takes me away from uh, making videos, which is kind of what I really love. But you got to do what pays the bills. But see, there's the uh, egg on there. And I guess I should mention that's an 8 millimeter. Uh, bead on there so nice different look it's got a different UV profile so there you go there's the pile of scrambled eggs here hopefully one of those piques your interest and gets you out on the water and fishing thanks guys appreciate it if there's any of those that you want to see in one of my regular videos let me know and um some of them I've done already, like some of the uh, earlier ones. Those ones are already up on the channel. And some of the newer ones like Jake's Estaz Egg Plus and um, the Nuke Eggs and the Eggs to See, Estaz to See one haven't been done yet, but we can put those together at some point in the future. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Do appreciate it. And uh, thanks. And uh, Ralph, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the comment. Appreciate that. Thanks for everybody who left a comment. That's awesome. We'll see you in the next one.